If you haven't uploaded a new version of your app in a little while and you're working on a bug fix or whatever the reason is for you to want to update your app, there's a good chance that Apple is going to reject your app. My name is Donnie Walls, and in this video, I would like to show you how you can add the new required privacy manifest file to your project when you're using certain APIs. Starting May 1st, Apple is requiring developers to declare that they're using certain APIs like user defaults or file system APIs, along with a reason why. Adding a privacy manifest file is not necessarily complicated, but it is a very tedious process. So let me walk you through it so that you can add a privacy manifest to your app and avoid a missing API declaration rejection. So as I said, Apple now requires you to declare that you're using certain APIs, right? And they have a web page, this one right here, where they show you everything that you need to know about which APIs, which functions, and which reasons go along with that. Now, it's a pretty complicated document, um, and you're just gonna have to read this to see which reason works best for you, and which uh, API type you're using. Typically in your rejection, Apple will tell you which uh, declaration you're missing. But if you wanna be proactive about it, definitely browse this page. I'll link it down in the description below so that you can get ahead of your rejections. Now, if you're using, for example, user defaults, which a lot of apps do, you're going to have to declare that in your privacy manifest. In this video, I'll, I'll show you exactly how to do that. And I'll show you in two ways. One is through Xcode, and another one is by using my privacy generator tool. So we'll go ahead and add a user defaults declaration to my project. Um, and that means that I have to add a privacy manifest file, give it the privacy access API category user defaults, and then give it a reason. I'm using this only inside of my app. So CA92.1 declared this reason to access user defaults to read and write information that is only accessible to the app itself is the option that works best for me. So if I go into my project, I can go file, new file, and I can look for the privacy manifest. So this is going to add a file called privacy info to my project, and I can choose to add it to a target, and I have to do this. If I don't do this, the, target, uh, the file will not be included in my project, and I will still get my rejection. So make sure that you hit all targets needed. Now, if you add any new um, third-party dependencies to your project, they will have to have this privacy info manifest specified as well, right? So that then when you compile your app, they'll all be merged into a single thing and everything will be fine. If you're using existing third-party libraries and you're not adding new ones, Apple is giving you some lenience there. So if you're using a third-party that doesn't have this privacy info, that's okay. Um, but if you're working on an SDK or if you're publishing something open source, definitely make sure to add this and go ahead and open PRs for tools that you use. I feel like that's a great way to give back to the creators of the tools that you know and love. All right, so if we go in here, we can see our app privacy configuration. And actually, to show you exactly what should go in here, I want to switch over to my privacy manifest generator tool because it is quite tedious to get you up to speed on everything that needs to be in here, right? We would have to add our access to API types and specify everything in there through this UI, which honestly, it can be a little bit tedious. So let me show you my tool. So I have a privacy manifest generator over at privacymanifest.dev. And on that page, you can actually add everything that you could want to add to your privacy manifest. In this case, I'm interested in adding required API usage for user defaults with CA92.1. But if I had tracking domains or NS privacy tracking needs, I can add those. I can tell Apple which user information I'm using in my app. And it will all add that to this XML right here, which makes up the privacy manifest file. So let me go ahead and remove that data type. There we go because all we need is the user defaults declaration. So that's all I've added here. I can see it here in my XML. I can copy that to my clipboard and go back to Xcode. And I can right click on the privacy info, open as source code, 
and I can just go ahead and paste in my data. I can see that everything worked because if I go back to this and show it as a property list, it is now fully populated with everything that it should have. So this is a lot easier than going through the menus all by yourself and working out where everything goes. Another way to get your hands on the manifest is to just download it from here and we will just give it to you straight away and you can add it to your project. Quite convenient, quite nice. And that's all you need to do. Once you have your privacy info, if you declared all your API reasons, you're now good to go and you can upload your app and Apple will be happy with it. Again, if you're missing something, Apple will give you a rejection message and in the rejection message, they'll tell you which API type you're accessing that you should have declared. You can go to Apple's website right here or you can go to privacymanifest.dev, click on the relevant API and read the descriptions. These are the same descriptions that Apple has. All right, that's all that I wanted to show you in this video. That's how you add a privacy manifest file to your project. And make sure that you subscribe, like, and all those things for the algorithm. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.